Coming up, we'll be passing two of the biggest film stars in Los Angeles, the 3rd and 2nd Street Tunnels. Look to your right, and you'll see the 3rd Street Tunnel featured in the science fiction horror film Dark Man, starring Liam Neeson as Dark Man, and the comedy Police Academy 2 starring Steve Gutenberg and Bubba Smith, among others. And next, its more famous neighbor, the Second Street Tunnel, in which Arnold Schwarzenegger dodged homemade bombs with his motorcycle and James Cameron's The Terminator, as well as when Will Smith's girlfriend Vivica Fox and her dog narrowly escaped incineration by alien spacecraft in Independence Day. Other films include Con Air, The X-Files, and Godzilla, as well as many television commercials and music videos. As we turn onto First Street and head up to the top of Bunker Hill, you see the headquarters for the Department of Water and Power, DWP. It is the largest municipally owned utility in the United States. Designed by A.C. Martin in 1964, it was and continues to be one of the greenest buildings in Los Angeles. The surrounding moat serves as a heat sink for the building's air conditioning system, and the parking lot features hundreds of solar panels. Up ahead on both sides of the street is the Music Center. The largest theater on the left is the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, home to the Oscars for many years. The theater in the center is the Mark Taper Forum, and the last and farthest from us is the Amundsen Theater. Combined with the Walt Disney Concert Hall across the street, the 11-acre campus is home to four internationally acclaimed resident companies. The Los Angeles Philharmonic, the Center Theater Group, the Los Angeles Opera, and the Los Angeles Master Chorale. We have arrived at our next stop, the Walt Disney Concert Hall. It frankly is the most spectacular and impressive of the four theaters with its massive steel curves that capture the creativity and energy of Los Angeles. Designed by renowned architect Frank Gehry, it is both a visual and aurally intimate musical experience as the 2,265 seats surround the orchestra. We are now arriving in the heart of the Civic Center. The building on the left is the Stanley Mosque Los Angeles County Courthouse, and the building behind that one on the left is the Kenneth Hahn Hall of Administration, the seat of government for Los Angeles County, the most populous county in the U.S., with over 9 million residents. In fact, 
If Los Angeles County were a state by itself, it would be the ninth largest state. As we approach our next stop, on our right and across the park stands the historic symbol of downtown Los Angeles, City Hall. At the time it was built in 1928, the architects had the foresight to construct the tower with a compressible joint on each floor, enabling it to ride out any earthquake. Ever since, Los Angeles has been a pioneer in earthquake engineering and safety due to the four major faults that lie beneath the city. Also located at this stop is the Metro Red Line Civic Center Station, where you can catch the subway and head west to Hollywood, or head east to Union Station. As we pull away from the curb, welcome to anyone who may have hopped back on aboard. Even the City Hall has an impressive classic film resume, as it was the police headquarters for the long-running Dragnet television series was the Daily Planet in the 1950s Superman television series, and finally it was destroyed by Martians in the 1953 version of The War of the Worlds. On the left is the Cathedral of Our Lady of Angels, completed in 2002, and is the seat of the Archbishop who presides over the largest Catholic archdiocese in the United States. The cathedral site was designed by Spanish architect Jose Rafael Maneo and can accommodate 3,000 worshipers. It also includes a conference center and a large plaza and cafe, both open to the public. The site is also the final resting place for Gregory Peck and June Marlowe, who are buried in the underground mausoleum. Chinatown. Early Chinese communities were located much closer to downtown Los Angeles. However, these communities were displaced to make way for construction of Union Station. Today, Chinatown is home to a Chinese population of about 15,000. However, it is not the biggest. That honor goes to the cities of the San Gabriel Valley, east of Los Angeles, and about a 30-minute drive on the 110 freeway.
arriving in Chinatown, you will soon begin to notice that almost every business, restaurant, shop, and even street signs are written in both English and Chinese, with some Thai and Vietnamese as well. But don't worry, everyone is used to tourists and will welcome you into their shops. You will also notice that much of Chinatown has not been developed like other parts of downtown Los Angeles. This in part is due to the fact that most of the Chinese American business investment is taking place in other local cities where they have now migrated. On our left, we will pass the Chinese United Methodist Church, founded in 1893. The church moved to its present location in 1947, and the building is a great example of the unique blending of Chinese and American architecture. It is the oldest Chinese Christian church in the city. The ordinary looking building on your left is the Pacific Alliance Medical Center, which was originally built in 1868 to serve the local French population. French Hospital, as it was known at the time, was one of the first hospitals in Los Angeles. right-hand side is Chinatown Central Plaza, built in the 1930s as part of America's first modern Chinatown, actually owned and planned by the Chinese as a major tourist attraction. The buildings and shops were designed by Hollywood set designers, using Shanghai as the model. The streets are exotic, Bamboo Lane, Jingling Way, and Chung Kang Road, as is the Wishing Well, modeled on the seven-star caverns in the Guangdong province. Today, the plaza has many interesting shops, restaurants, and art galleries, and is a great place to browse. Just beyond the central plaza is the modern Bamboo Plaza building, which is home to the famous Empress Pavilion restaurant, featuring dim sum at lunchtime. Dim sum, meaning order to your heart's content, is a Chinese-style buffet where small dishes and baskets of food are brought to you on a cart for you to select. The food is delicious and is excellent value for your money. The two small clapboard houses on your left were built in the late 1880s by French immigrants and moved to their present location in 1995. The first is the Chinese Historical Society of Southern California and the second the Chinatown Heritage and Visitor Center. They contain an extensive archive of artifacts and historical photos that tell the Chinese-American story in Southern California. As we turn onto Broadway, ahead on the right is the Phoenix Bakery, the oldest and largest bakery in Chinatown, famous for its cookies and its whipped cream and fresh strawberry cake. Oh, delicious and decadent. We will be stopping just beyond the Phoenix Bakery for those of you wishing to explore this area around Chinatown's Central Plaza. At the entrance to the plaza on our right is the East Gate, constructed by Y.C. Hong. If you look closely at the top of the gate, you can see a poem written with four Chinese characters that states, the spirit of Mother Meng and Mother Ao. These two women were renowned mothers in Chinese history, and Hong put this poem on the gate to honor his mother.
As we continue south on Broadway, we will drive to one of the most unique shopping districts in Los Angeles. On your left are three major shopping bazaars. The Saigon Plaza, where you can find many bargains on a huge variety of items. Chinatown Plaza, a great place for jewelry. And the Dynasty Center, for fashions both Chinese and Western. And even though you may hear different languages spoken, everyone is friendly and eager to make a deal. Coming up on your right, after the parking lot, is the Far East Plaza, which is said to be the first modern ethnic shopping mall in America. Built originally as a food destination, the plaza contains several restaurants serving varying styles of regional Asian cuisine that can be found nowhere else in Chinatown. You will also find many retail shops, including the largest department store in Chinatown, the Wing Hop Fong Jin Sing and China Product Center. We will soon pass underneath the Chinatown Gateway. Built in 2001, it features twin dragons who have descended from the clouds and are resting on two pillars, which symbolize the popular Chinese themes good luck, wealth, and long life. Surprisingly, the movie Chinatown, starring Jack Nicholson, Faye Dunaway, and John Huston, has only one climatic, heartbreaking scene filmed within Chinatown. However, many other movies have been filmed here, including 48 Hours, Pretty in Pink, Lethal Weapon 4, Freaky Friday, Anchorman, Friends with Money, Nancy Drew, and Spanglish. Not to be forgotten are the many television shows that have also filmed here over the years that include Hunter, The Rockford Files, Heart to Heart, Beverly Hills 90210, Melrose Place, Charmed, and Jag. Leaving Chinatown behind, we are briefly entering the Civic Center. The large, gray, imposing building is the Federal Hall of Justice, the oldest building in the Civic Center. For more than 50 years before the Criminal Courts building was opened across the street in 1973, the Hall of Justice was the site of Los Angeles' most sensational trials, including those of Bugsy Siegel, Charles Manson, and Sirhan Sirhan.
We are now entering the Pueblo District, also known as the birthplace of Los Angeles. Founded in 1781 by a group of Spanish settlers down by the banks of the Los Angeles River. However, frequent floods forced the settlers to relocate the settlement to the area ahead on the left, now occupied as the old Plaza Church. Coming up on your right is the Pico House, built by Pio Pico, the last Mexican governor of California. It was the first three-story hotel in Los Angeles and the finest in all of the Southwest. Across the street and to your left is the Old Plaza Church, also known as the Church of Our Lady, the Queen of the Angels, dedicated in 1822. The church is the oldest religious structure in Los Angeles and today hosts thousands of Latin Americans every Sunday, making this also one of the busiest churches in Los Angeles. As we approach the turn, you may notice the Grand Mission Renaissance style building on your left. The Terminal Annex, built in 1938, served as the main mail distribution center for Los Angeles until 1994, and is now no longer used as a post office. If it seems like you've been here before, you have. Los Angeles is the most filmed city in the world. One of the most famous LA film locations is Union Station on your left. When the station opened in 1939, it didn't take long for movie makers to see its potential. As the last of the great Grand Rail Terminals, the station has stood in for New York's Grand Central Station in the movie Pearl Harbor. But its most famous role was when it served as the location of the police headquarters in Ridley Scott's 1982 dark vision of Los Angeles, Blade Runner. Today, the station is the central point for the Metro, Metrolink, and Amtrak rail services. Architecturally, the station is Spanish colonial revival with many streamlined modern features and also includes the amazing Art Deco restaurant used as the dance the 1999 comedy Blast from the Past, starring Brendan Fraser and Alicia Silverstone.
Pueblo District and the home of the oldest street in Los Angeles. Originally, Olvera Street was known as Wine Street because of the nearby winery and vineyards. The street was later renamed in honor of the first Los Angeles County Judge, Augustin Olvera. Also located here is the Avia Adobe, LA's oldest surviving home, which dates back to 1818 and includes original furniture and decor. Ahead and on your right, you can see the first firehouse built in 1884. The building has been carefully restored and even has a working turntable that was used to turn the wagons around when the firemen returned home. It is certainly worth a visit. As we leave and cross over the 101, known by locals as the Hollywood Freeway, the building on the left is not a hotel, but one of the largest urban jails in the United States, the Federal Metropolitan Detention Center. Unfortunately, the first stop for anyone, even celebrities who break the law. To our right is the United States District Courthouse, the busiest federal courthouse in the nation. Built in the late 1930s, it will be replaced by a new 19-story courthouse to be built two blocks east of this location. You're welcome to get off at any of the 14 stops along the way and explore the city on your own. However, make sure that you keep your ticket with you at all times. is the Geffen Contemporary at the Museum of Contemporary Art, or MOCA. Once a temporary home to the permanent collection, the museum location was such a success that when the new museum was completed on Bunker Hill near the Civic Center, it was decided that the temporary contemporary, as it was known at the time, would stay. Today, MOCA is the only museum in Los Angeles devoted exclusively to contemporary art.
also on your right is the Japanese American Museum, the first of its kind in the United States, dedicated to the history and contribution of Japanese Americans. We have arrived in Little Tokyo, home to many shops and restaurants located in the Japanese Village Plaza. The main street is named in honor of astronaut Ellison S. Onizuka, and there is a memorial in honor of him and his fellow Challenger space shuttle crew. We are going to be stopping here where you have the opportunity to visit both museums. Welcome back for those who have rejoined the tour. On your right, we are passing 13 buildings that are the last remaining block of the original Little Tokyo, which have been placed on the National Register of Historic Places. They are all that's left of the massive urban redevelopment efforts of the 1970s. Ahead and to your left, is the massive Caltrans building, designed by award-winning architect Tom May. Caltrans is responsible for the upkeep of California's highways, rail services, and airports. Completed in 2005 at a cost of $170 million, the building is constructed of materials similar to those used in construction of freeways and billboards. The building sticks out over the street, purposely throwing the building off balance, and giving the impression that the building is incomplete, a work in progress, much like the ongoing operations of Caltrans. This building was featured recently as the villain headquarters in the Disney movie, G-Force. Coming up next on the left is the new half-million-square-foot headquarters of the Los Angeles Police Department, completed in 2009 and said to be the most expensive and technologically advanced police headquarters in the country. With almost 10,000 police officers and 3,000 staff, the LAPD is the fifth largest law enforcement agency in the United States, serving a city which covers almost 473 square miles. Next up, after the police headquarters on the left is the historic Los Angeles Times building, designed by Gordon B. Kaufman, whose other works include Hoover Dam. It was built in 1935 and was the largest building in the U.S. dedicated solely to newspaper publishing. Today, the Times has a daily delivery from Santa Barbara to the Mexican border, a 45,000 square mile area, larger than the state of Ohio making it the largest metropolitan newspaper in the country. Turning left onto Broadway, we are now on the northern edge of the historic Los Angeles Broadway Theater District, the largest concentration of pre-World War II movie palaces in the United States. And though the curtain is closed long ago, some of the theaters are being restored. The area features a variety of shops and restaurants and some of the best bargains in town. In fact, this is one of the busiest shopping districts in the entire city, with more dollars spent here 
than even on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. to explore three major landmarks. Coming up on your right, Sid Grauman built one of the first motion picture palaces in the U.S. in 1918 for one million dollars and named it the Million Dollar Theater. The theater seats 2,200 people in an auditorium resembling a Spanish cathedral. William Mulholland headquartered the Metropolitan Water District offices in the upper floors and as some say, he stole the water that helped Los Angeles to grow at the beginning of the 20th century. This story eventually became the plot for the movie Chinatown. Also coming up on your left, you would not know from the exterior, but there sits a National Historic Architectural Landmark, the Bradbury Building. However, once inside, you will experience its grandeur as natural light floods the five-story atrium. The building's greatest feature is the ornamental cast iron elevators, stairs, and handrails on each floor. Its most famous role was in Ridley Scott's Blade Runner during the climatic scene between Harrison Ford as R. Deckard and Rutger Hauer as Roy Batty. Back across the street to your right, if it's baked, cooked, prepared, and served in Los Angeles, you will find it in the Grand Central Market. The building first designed in 1897 was eventually remodeled in 1917 to serve as the central market for all of downtown Los Angeles. On the main floor of the market, you can sample an amazing array of fruits and vegetables, meat, poultry, and fish. As we continue along Broadway, you will notice a large white brick building on the right-hand corner at 4th Street. Built in 1914, this was originally the Broadway department store, which became notorious in the 1930s for introducing women's slacks to North America. Today, it is the California State Office Building. As you look ahead down Broadway, you'll be amazed that there are no new buildings here. It's like we're stepping back in time. And that's why Hollywood loves this area for filming, especially if they need a street to double for New York City or Chicago in the 1930s. Many films have shot here on these streets recently, including Transformers, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and Dreamgirls, among others. Keep in mind that in the early 1900s, Broadway was the busiest entertainment and shopping district in the city, filled with theaters and department stores. Downtown LA, in fact, has the largest historic theater district in North America. Some of these theaters can be seen ahead, just beyond Fifth Street on the left-hand side, including the Roxy Theater, built in 1932, and the Cameo Theater, built in 1911, both of which sadly no longer operate as theaters today. Coming up on our left-hand side is Pershing Square, which was the first official park in Los Angeles, established in 1866. On the edge of this park, further ahead on the left, is a gorgeous red brick building, the fabulous Biltmore Hotel. When it was built in 1923, it was the largest hotel west of Chicago. Nine Oscar ceremonies were held here in the 1930s and 40s, and literally hundreds of movies have been filmed in its spectacular interior including Chinatown, Rocky III, Ghostbusters, and Bringing Down the House with Steve Martin. Ahead on the right is a massive white postmodern cylindrical skyscraper, the U.S. Bank Tower. Built in 1992 by the architecture firm of IMK, 
This 75-story skyscraper is the tallest building in the west coast of America. It was famously featured in the movie Independence Day when it was destroyed by the alien spaceship. Opposite the U.S. Bank Tower is the modern-styled Los Angeles Central Library, built in 1926, which is now the third largest public library in America. We'll be stopping here by the library at stop 34 for those of you who want to explore this part of the city. This neighborhood is perfect for an open-top bus because you can look up and enjoy the beautiful variety of architecture in this area. Notice across the street to the right the gorgeous detailing on the Milano Lofts building, formerly an office building built in 1925 and refurbished in 2005 into luxurious loft apartments. This conversion of such old office buildings into loft apartments and condos has helped revitalize downtown Los Angeles which is now home to over 40,000 residents, most of whom work in the downtown area. On our left now is the Pacific Mutual Life Insurance Building, home to one of the most important life insurance companies in the West. The main building, built in 1921, boasted that it had more marble in its interior than any other building of its kind in the country. Coming up on the left again is Pershing Square, dubbed the Living Room of Los Angeles, because it became the city center after the major businesses and hotels relocated to this area in the 1920s and 30s. As we head back towards Broadway, you will see many businesses in this area are jewelry dealers. That's because this area is known as the Jewelry Mart District, the second largest such district in the U.S. after New York City. Most of the jewelry sold here is designed and manufactured on the upper floors, then brought down to the retail shops on the street level, many of which offer wholesale prices to the public, making this a great place to shop. As we turn back onto Broadway, we will be stopping outside the Los Angeles Theatre, built in 1931. The theater's French Baroque interior is the largest and most beautiful of all the Broadway movie palaces. Coming up on your left is the Palace Theater, built in 1911, and the oldest remaining Orpheum vaudeville theater in the country. Eventually, the theater was converted to show talking pictures. The theater has been featured in many films throughout its history, including Mulholland Drive, directed by David Lynch. Also on your left is the classic Clifton's Cafeteria which has been operating continuously since 1935 under the guarantee of dying free unless delighted. Coming up, we see two theaters. As we cross 7th Street on your right is the State Theater. In 1929, a young girl named Frances made her Los Angeles debut here, performing on stage as one of the Gum Sisters. 
1934, after touring with the Vaudeville Circuit, she changed her name to Judy Garland. The next year, she signed a contract with MGM, eventually starring as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Not every theater was built for vaudeville performances or movie screenings. On your left is the Globe Theater, built exclusively for plays. It was the first serious playhouse in Los Angeles until the Great Depression, when it was converted to show newsreels. Coming up are two major landmarks. Across the street on your left is one of the most important locations in movie history, the Tower Theater. Opening in 1927, it was soon converted for the premiere of The Jazz Singer, the first talking picture. Once audiences could hear their favorite actors speak, it was only a matter of time before the silent movies truly were silenced. The line of awnings you see on the southwest corner on your right are what remains of the great May Company department store. Similar to New York's Macy's and Gimbel's Grand Department Stores, May Company was the largest department store in downtown Los Angeles. During the holidays, people used to drive for miles to see its elaborate holiday window displays. Today, it is the Broadway Trade Center, a multi-level indoor shopping district. Back across the street is the Rialto Theater, featuring one of the largest marquees on Broadway. Originally opened in 1912 as a Nickelodeon, it now sits as quiet as a silent movie. With its opera house-like interior, the Orpheum Theater on your left is one of the grandest movie palaces on Broadway. At its height, performers such as Bob Hope, Bing Crosby, Lena Horne, the Marx Brothers, Jack Benny, Will Rogers, George Burns, and Gracie Allen, and Duke Ellington called this theater home. And up until 2000, it was still showing movies. Fashion District, which spans 90 blocks and is the center of the apparel industry on the West Coast. Every day, thousands of designers, buyers, retailers, and shoppers come into the Fashion District to launch a new clothing line, sell fabric, or find a bargain. Here are some interesting Fashion District facts. Over 37,000 people work in about 2,100 fashion-related businesses. Those businesses occupy more than 18 million square feet, which is almost 25% of downtown Los Angeles. And over $4 billion changes hands each year. On both your left and right is the center of the fashion universe in Los Angeles, the California Market Center, with over 3 million square feet of showrooms that feature over 10,000 product lines. The California Market Center also features the Los Angeles International Textile Show, which is the premier showcase for the textile industry in the United States. now in the heart of the fashion district. Just one block east of Santee Street is Santee Alley on our right. If you've never been to a real outdoor shopping district, then this is the place for you. This is the best place for clothing bargains in the city. We will be stopping for those of you who wish to shop or walk around. Hold on to your ticket and we look forward to seeing you again later.
welcome back to those rejoining us on our trip around downtown Los Angeles. As we depart, you can see on both the right and the left some of the hundreds of small shops that make up the fashion district. Even though many of the clothing and accessory products are imported and sold from around the world, much of what you see is made right here. And if you walk into any of the bridal shops, chances are you will be speaking to the designers themselves. As we approach Broadway, to the left is the Los Angeles Examiner, founded in 1903 by William Randolph Hearst to launch his campaign for president. Designed during the Mission Revival period by Julia Morgan, best known for her work on his San Simeon estate, the building was completed in 1914. Hearst's rise to power was alleged to be told in the movie Citizen Kane, with Orson Welles playing the fictional Kane character. In 1989, the Examiner, never regaining its momentum after a prolonged labor strike, went out of business. This left Los Angeles with only one major newspaper. Approaching Hill Street, look to the left, and you will see a tall building that seems to stand guard alone. This is the AT&T Center, LA's first modern skyscraper. It is 452 feet high, 32 stories, and was completed in 1965. At the time, no building could be taller than City Hall, which stands at 454 feet tall. Though technically in downtown, it was built at a time when plans for the Bunker Hill, where the majority of high rises are located, were still on the drawing board. We are now entering the newest and most exciting district in downtown Los Angeles, South Park. Before the lofts and luxury condominiums were built, the area was known for factories, automobile dealerships, and residential hotels. The most famous of these, the Morrison Hotel, featured on the album by The Doors, is located two blocks south of us on Pico Boulevard.
On our right, you will see the Los Angeles Convention Center complex. At 750,000 square feet, it is one of the largest convention spaces in the U.S. Among the many that are built at the convention center, demolition movements, face off, show girls, Starship Troopers, and of course, the climatic scene in Rush Hour with Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. In 1999, the Staples Center opened and is home to five professional sports teams. The Los Angeles Lakers and Los Angeles Clippers of the NBA, the Los Angeles Kings of the NHL, the Los Angeles Sparks of the WNBA, and the Los Angeles Avengers of the AFL. Up ahead and to the left, you will see LA Live, the Times Square of Los Angeles, a $2 billion complex that when completed will take up six city blocks. The first phase opened in October 2007 with the Nokia Theater, a 7,100 seat concert and award show venue, and the Nokia Plaza, a 40,000 square foot outdoor area with six 75 foot towers, each with a giant LED screen. Reminiscent of Times Square in New York and the Ginza District in Tokyo, Japan, giant LED screens will broadcast sports and breaking news events on the sides of the entertainment complex. Already, the Nokia Theater has hosted the American Idol finale and has become the permanent home of the Emmy Awards. We are now stopping at LA Live, the Times Square of Los Angeles. If you disembark, please remember to keep your ticket so that you can reboard. To the left is the Hotel Figueroa, which will dazzle you with its Moroccan interiors, gardens, and suites named Casablanca, Marrakesh, and Medina. You were transported back in time when exotic destinations could only be reached by Pan American Clipper. Just a block from the glitter of LA Live, it is hard to believe this downtown oasis was built in 1922. Down the street on the left, is the famous original Pantry Cafe. Opened in 1924, the rep, we hope that you are enjoying Starline's city sightseeing tour of downtown Los Angeles. 
please be sure that you keep your ticket in a safe place, as you will need this if you choose to leave the bus and then wish to rejoin again later. Your ticket is valid from the time of issue for either the city site scene futuristic urban vision of the 1970s. The hotel features floating walkways, reflecting pools, and glass elevators that climb the sides, and even a revolving cocktail lounge that provides a panoramic view of Los Angeles. You can expect to see this iconic building in a number of motion pictures, including the exciting climax to In the Line of Fire with Clint Eastwood, as well as Blue Thunder, Mission Impossible 3, and True Lies, just to mention a few. It has also been featured in many television shows, including CSI and the sitcom It's a Living. We will be stopping for those of you who would like to get out and explore the financial district. Please remember to keep your tickets in a safe place so that you can rejoin us at a later time.